Hey everyone, I'm going to do another Power Query video today. This time I'm going to go over how you can create conditional if statements in Power Query. And the data I've downloaded today is the Tuition Assistance Program from the data.gov website. Uh, if you click on the link in this video to the to the post, it'll, it'll send you to that, uh, or it'll give you the link to that data set if you want to follow along. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is how to put this data set into Power Query and then do some conditional if statements. Okay, so this has funding information. So what I'm gonna do is uh, create some conditional columns to, to create one column for pub, public funding and private funding, pulling in the dollars, and then also a another column to determine, you know, if the uh, level of study was at least four years, okay? So first things first, to put this into Power Query, again, really simple, all you're doing is in the data section, hitting from sheet, and that's gonna load up Power Query. And there's nothing that I'm gonna do to this data set. It's gonna take a, a little bit time to load just because this is a really, really big file. I'm gonna hit okay. And so it automatically converts it into a table when it loads it into, into Power Query. Okay, and now, now that it's in here, now I can start manipulating it. So what I wanna do is look at this column and say, okay, if it's public or private, then I'm gonna create a separate column to pull in these recipient dollars. Because right now these recipient dollars are just a total of everything. And so I could, you know, do um, do a pivot table or use a summit function to say, okay, these are the total private dollars, these are the total uh, public dollars. But in Power Query, I can just set them up so they're their own individual columns. So the one thing to remember in Power Query is when you're wanting to change an existing column, you use the transform section in most cases. Okay. If you want to actually create an additional column, then you're going to go to add column. And so right here you see an option for conditional columns. So that's what I'm going to do here. Select that one. And, and in this window here, I'm going to put in my my name, I'm going to uh, or the column name, I'm going to put private funding. And then so the conditional column how it works here is I can set up, okay, select the column name that I'm looking at. In this case, it's gonna be the sector type. For the operator, there's options you can say, you know, does not equal to, so begins with. I'm just gonna set it equals to the word private, and this is case sensitive, so keep that in mind as well. And so what I'm saying is, okay, if the sector type equals private, then what I wanna do is I, and enter a number here in this in this field, or I can pull the value from a column, which is what I'm gonna do, because I wanna pull it from this recipient dollars column. So I'm gonna go to the bottom here, tap recipient dollars. And so if the word, if the sector type is equal to private, it's gonna pull this value. Otherwise, else, I'm just gonna set it to zero. Hit okay. And now just like that, I've got that private funding column set up. I'm gonna do this again, except this time for public funding. So again, the same sort of thing. And I'm just gonna call this public funding and sector type, this time equals public. And then the output again is going to be a column and I'm gonna select recipient dollars otherwise zero. Hit okay. And now you'll notice I've got a number in one of these two columns. It's never gonna overlap because it's gonna be either private or public. Now, again, this may, this may seem a bit redundant because you know I've already got this indicator for private or public here, but you know, let's say you don't wanna do a sum if you don't wanna do a pivot table, you can set it up this way. And what I can also do is now that I've created these um, these columns, I can delete this sector type because you know I may not need it anymore. So I can remove it, and 
my calculations will, will work just fine. Even though they initially relied on that column, because Power Query is saving these steps along the way, every time you do a refresh, it's gonna run through these steps each time. So as long as I'm not deleting this col column before I create those custom columns, then it's not an issue. Now, the one more the, the more challenging situation is, you know, in that conditional column window, you're pretty limited as far as what you could do to create an if statement, right? And so if you actually wanted to do something a bit more complex, like let's say this level of study, I want to determine if the level of study was at least four years. I can't do that from this conditional column. There just wasn't, a, wasn't enough there to, flexibility to do that. So what I can do is use this custom column section here. I'm going to launch that. And here I'm going to say, you know, let's say uh, at least four years, question mark. That'll be the name of the column. And so what I'm going to want to do here is create some create some formulas. Now, if you're not familiar with, with, with uh, formulas in Power Query, again, if you go to the post in the link, I'll, I'll show you where you can uh, um, look those up. But um, there's, there's two things I'm gonna need to do. One is to extract that first character and then convert it into a number. So the first function I'm gonna use in Power Query is the text.start. Open that up. And then what I'm going to do is reference that field and I can just double click it from, from here. So it has all the available columns that I can use. So I'm going to use the tap level of study. And what I'm going to do is just like you would use the, the left function in Excel, you can indicate how many characters you want to pull. And in this case, I just want to pull the first one. I'm going to close it. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, hit OK just because I want to do the step by step. So I'm gonna hit okay, and so you can see it's it's pulling in the first first character, but it's not reading it as a number yet. So I'm gonna go back here into the settings, and now the next the next formula, the next function that I'm gonna use is I'm gonna convert this from the text to a number. So there's a function called number dot from text. And the one thing you want to be careful with uh, Power Query is these formulas, these functions are case sensitive. So you don't want to misspell them. You want to be careful with uh, how you're entering them. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see it's a number. It's a line to the right. And so I know that this is going to read as a number now. So go back in here one more time. And now right now it's returning the number. But the one thing I needed to do is evaluate if it's greater than or equal to four. So I can just add an operator here to say greater than or equal to four. Hit okay. If I just wanted a true false value to show up in, in this column, then I'd be done here. But let's say, you know, I just want to put something, something else. I wanted to actually use an if else statement. Then what I could do is type if at the front here, and then if I go to the end here, I'm going to type else, oh sorry, not if then. So if it's greater than or equal to four, then I want it to say yes. And then I'll type in the word else, no. So this is, this is similar to how you'd set up an if statement in Excel, where you're going to say, if this is greater than or equal to four, then you, the next comma would be for the value if it's true. And then the last argument would be if it's if it's false. So in this case, you're just wording it a bit differently, where you're typing the word if, then your condition, then you're writing the word then, the result if it's true, then you're writing the word else, and the result if it's false. So if you've coded um, in, in VBA, it's a similar type of logic. Um, it, it's similar to the, to the if statement, just, just using keywords in this case. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now you'll see that the values show up as either a yes or a no. So if I were to check this, I can just select the yeses and then scroll over to the left here. 
and I can see all these ones now start with at least a 4 or a 5. You know, and just to double check the other way, let's just select the ones that were no's. And yeah, these are mostly twos, it looks like. So proving out that uh, the if statement works correctly. And then again, if you don't need that column anymore, you can just delete it, remove, and then let's say you're done with this, home, close and load. And now what it's going to do is update your, update your table with those changes in here. And so again, it's going to run through all of those steps every single time. And just to make sure that, um, you know, it's repeating the same process. There could be some errors in here because there's a big data set. So there could be ones that don't, that aren't numbers or that there's different descriptions, but I'm not going to go through this massive data set to figure that out. But as you can see, it's pulled in the columns. It's got the private funding and the public. So if I wanted to look at the totals, I could just look at these individual columns and then I've got my criteria in there. So that's a wrap for how to create uh, conditional if statements in Power Query. If you have any suggestions on other things you'd like to see in Power Query, feel free to leave a comment in the video. Otherwise, thanks for watching.